Okay, this is number 37. We're going to just walk through the two steps. Well, the two pieces I want you to do, which is solve by substitution and then graph it to check. So, y is, in the second one, y is already isolated. So, in terms of steps, the steps we wrote yesterday, let me go find those real quick. Substitute is, we're ready to do that. Second step get either x or y by itself, that was given, so that first step is done, so we're ready to substitute the expression in to the other equation. So I'm just going to rewrite equation 1, equation 2, so I'll re rewrite equation 1 with y substituted. <clears throat> Equals 1. Okay, so I just grabbed the expression, in fact let me kind of put arrows on here and substituted it for y, <clears throat> excuse me, into the first one. And yeah, this is kind of nasty. There's some fractions in there. I'm thinking I'll probably distribute first. So this <coughs> 4 and times negative 2, I think I'll just change that to minus, minus 8 fifths x, and then distribute the 4 onto the 2, and you get 8. Okay. So before I get rid of this fraction, I, I just kind of want to clean stuff up. So actually, you can do that. Maybe in this case, it's better to just go ahead and multiply by what? We have a fraction, so we need to multiply by the least common denominator, right? But there's only one denominator, so you just use that one. So we get 15x, and then we multiply here. I'll write it out for posterity. And then 5 times 8 is 40, and then we get 5 times 1 is 5. So I should probably just for good measure show that we distributed. Those 5s cancel. That's why we did this. Actually, that middle piece right there was why we chose 5. So then we get 15x minus 8x plus 40 equals 5. Let's combine. We get 7x. And I think just to save a step, I'm going to subtract this 40 right now. So 7x from those two equals negative 35. Okay, and then we divide. And we get negative 5. Is this the one we were just doing with you? You did not get this, right? So I, I must need to double check it. I'll come check it again to see where we went wrong. <clears throat> anyway, so we get negative 5. And then our next step in the directions, that was all step 3. So step 4, plug the value that we just found into the easiest equation and solve for the other variable. In this case, solve for y. So easiest is subjective, somewhat. Which equation would you guys plug this into? So she's saying 2, you're saying 1, she's saying 1. It just depends, okay? I guess, how I would kind of guess a lot of people would want to avoid this 2 fifths and go to the first one. And that's fine, it doesn't actually matter. So 3x plus 4y equals 1. That's where I'm going to plug this into. So that's equation 1 again. 3x plus 4y equals 1. This goes right there. Then we just solve for y. We'll get negative 15. Add your 15, or add your 15. I'm stepping ahead there. 4y equals 16, and y equals 4, once we divide. Okay, are we done? We have one more thing to do. Give the solution as a point. And probably on your notes, add that, just so you know what I mean by point. And that's for when we do two equations. When we do three, you're going to have to do all three as a 3D point. OK? 
Okay, I'm going to put or in here somewhere. For this one, it's just x, y, so we'll just write it as... I oh, wish I didn't have to scroll so much. Negative 5, comma, 4. So our final answer looks like that. Okay, that was solving my substitution. Now we need to go use the graphing calculator, and this is for practice checking, but also practice graphing to solve. So we're looking on our graphing calculator, we hope to get negative 5, 4. Back. <coughs> the second equation is already in graphable form, so I can just plug that one in. Two, negative 2 fifths x plus 2. Uh, by the way, that's what a linear quadratic system looks like. See how it crosses twice? You can use your calculator for that too. Okay, so what was it again? Negative 2 fifths x plus 2. Negative, and I don't, I don't personally like using the fraction deal on here. I just like doing it with parentheses because it's faster. So negative 2 fifths x plus 2. Okay, there's that one. Can I enter the other one like this? Into the graphing calculator? Can that one go in like that? No, we need to go create a graphable equation from this. So making it graphable means what? How did, what form does it have to be in to be graphable? Yes, y equals mx plus b. So subtract 3x, and then divide everything by 4, and our graphable form will be 1 fourth minus 3 fourths x. 1 fourth minus 3 fourths x. Again, I'm just going to do this as division, so 1 fourth minus 3 fourths x. Okay, uh, did it give me an x? There it goes. Okay, hit graph, and the point of intersection is there. It's kind of hard to see, but let's try zoom fit, which is zoom and then hit zero. Yeah, so see how it rearranged the window a little to look a little nicer? Remember what to do next? How do we find that point? Second trace. Yeah, second trace. That gives us the calculation menu, and then we hit 5. Okay, remember you're either going to have to do like left bound, right bound, or more likely, it's asking, is, are these the equations you want to check? So do you want 2 fifths x plus 2? Yes, I do. Do you want one, negative 1 fourth x, etc.? Yes, I do. And then there's our intersection at negative 5, 4, which was what we found somewhere down here. That's what we found algebraically. Good? Okay. You will have four of these on your quiz. Okay, four of these. Three of them. Um, have fractions. Three of them don't have fractions, one of them does. Do you have to solve them with substitution? No, you don't. So she asked if you, if you have to, like, are you mandated to solve by substitution, and the answer is no. And like I told you, it's not my favorite version, so I'm going to show you elimination today. Uh, before I do that, real quick, I want to ask you about what if this one was given this way? Like negative 7x equals negative 5. Actually, let's make it even worse. Negative 7x plus 5 equals negative 8y. So I want you to think about how you would solve that system. 
Well, it's all out of order, right? So as we get into elimination, I want you to think about this standard form idea where it's x and then y and then equals and then a number, okay? And we want to keep it in that form. How many of you guys have, um, how many problems have you done on this list? So starting at 35, how many? Just hold up a number of problems you've done so far. So I see three, four, four, two, 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 two. Okay. Let's everybody do one more. And then let's call it good for now. Where's my scroller? How many of you have done 45? Anybody done 45? You did? Okay, did you do 43? Yeah. Okay, so let's do 43. Everybody go to 43. We're all going to work on it together. Then we'll check it. Then we'll talk substitute, or excuse me, elimination. Okay, so practicing substitution, then graphing to check. I would not just, I want to point this out before we start. And I hope to get you there, but I would never use substitution on this. And the reason why is because it's not that easy to get a variable by itself, but elimination on this one is super easy to do. So we're going to actually do this twice. We're going to do it right now with substitution. Then I'll show you elimination, and I think you'll like it a lot better if you don't remember what elimination looks like. So to get a variable by itself, I'm going to choose this x. And again, that's only because we're being forced by directions, whoa, that's huge, to do it this way. Otherwise, I, again, I wouldn't choose eliminate or substitution. Okay, so now x is positive, and then add your 4, and we'll get 4 minus 8y is the same as x. So now we have a substitutable expression for x. Well, we got that from equation 2, so we need to plug this back into equation 1. So we get two parentheses, and the rest of it gets copied down. Remember, anything you don't use or don't change, just copy down. So instead of x, we're writing the equivalent of x, which is 4 minus 8y. Again, why did we do that? Like, why did we take time to substitute? So we have one variable, right? Notice now we can solve this for y. Up here, we could not solve either equation because there were two variables. So we'll distribute. We'll get 8 minus 16y minus 16y. This is zoomed in, so it jumps really a lot. Okay, 8 minus 32y equals 8, and then negative 32, I should show the step, sorry. Minus 8, minus 8, and we get negative 32y equals 0, so we know y is 0, okay? All right. Now we go back and we pick one of these equations to get x. Let me highlight which ones we can use. That one, that one, or since we took the time, you can use that one. That's the one I would pick because x is already by itself. That's one nice thing about substitution, about the only thing. So that equation was equation 3. And it was 4 minus 8y equals x. So I take the 0 and plug it right there for y. Now it's going to look like 4 minus 8. And 0 goes right there. Okay. Well, 8 times 0 is just 0. What did I miss here? That's not 8. That's supposed to say x. Sorry. That was just a scrolling issue. So that's supposed to say x. 
So 4 minus 0, and we'll get x equals 4. So our point is 4, 0. That's our solution. So it's actually an x-intercept, right? For one of these. Well, actually for both. Okay, to graph this, we need to turn both of these into graphable equations, which is still some more work. I guess before we do that, let's make sure nobody has questions on the solving. Kyler, are you with me? Any questions on the solving? Okay. So graphable, then, we need to get this y by itself. So first step would be to subtract that 2x, so 8 minus 2x. To subtract 2x over, then divide by negative 16 all the way across. So we'll get y equals negative 1 half. So 8 over 16 is not 2. Guys, a lot of students do that. They'll say 8 divided by 16. And then their brain flips it, and they do 16 divided by 8. Make sure they're re you're reading correctly. And then we get plus 1. Actually, I'm just going to write it as x over 8. So 1 8 x, or x over 8. So that one's graphable. This one, you need to add x. So we kind of did this already, part of it. It's actually this, only we just had one more step to get y by itself. So we get negative 8y equals negative 4 plus x. Then divide by negative 8 all the way across. And you'll get, again, it's not 2, it's 1 half, and then x over 8. Uh, sorry, x over negative 8. Boy, those are pretty close, aren't they? When you look at them in graphical form, negative 1 half, positive 1 half, x over 8, negative 8. It's pretty close. Mm, this looks weird. Okay, go to your calculator, clear up what you had there before. Okay, so we have negative one half, one half, and plus x over eight, plus x over eight. And then we had positive one half minus x over 8. So there they are crossing. And then second trace, 5 intersection, hit enter all the way through, and we get 4, 0. How's this going? Uh huh? Too many steps. Okay. So, how about this, the solving? We at least wrote those steps down, okay? The graphing part is kind of a separate process, but you can use it to check. Okay. So, let's do this one by elimination now. Everybody write this down. You don't need the 43. The 43 doesn't necessarily matter, but... Put it as an example in your notebook. So we're going to solve this by elimination, much preferred method for this system. What does eliminate mean in just everyday life? Get rid of. Get rid of, right? So we the name for this method is because we want to get rid of a variable. We don't want to just get it by itself, but we want to get rid of it. Okay? Another name for this, and I kind of wish it would stick around, is combination. So combine, com combination, combine. Most people call this elimination. But it's actually doing both. We are going to combine these two equations in a way that eliminates a variable. So you can see why both names are kind of important. 
So when we say combine, that means add or subtract. And it kind of goes back to your elementary school days when you had these kind of problems. Do you wish you ever still had those? Do you remember when things were set up on top of each other like that? Yeah. That's what we're doing. We're going to look at these as on top of each other, and we're either going to add them or subtract them in a way that gets rid of a variable. So, it's good and definitely going to be helpful to keep track of your equations and eliminations. Again, I want you to start building that habit because in systems of three equations, there's stuff going on all over. There's like 10 steps and you need to keep track of them. Okay? So, is there a way right now, can I just add or subtract these two to get rid of X or Y? There's none. If I add them, nothing goes away, and if I subtract, nothing goes away. So we need to change the coefficients of one of these to match the other so that when we do add or subtract, we can get rid of it. And if you have flexibility. I always recommend doing the easiest one. So do you see how if I make this a 2x, it will match that 2x, and then I can subtract or add to get rid of it, all right? So to do that, we need to multiply this equation by 2. I'm just going to get rid of that brace right there. It's kind of in the way. So multiply that equation by 2. OK? So we're going to call this equation 3. And it is negative 2x minus 16y and negative 8. OK? Does everybody see where I got equation 3? OK. By the way, you can label equations either on the left or the right. The only reason I did it on the right is because I wrote this. OK? So we have equation 3, and it matches equation, the x's match, in this case, also the y's match. That's not going to happen every time, but this case it happens to do that. So I'm going to just copy down equation 1. And we want to get rid of a variable. You can choose, because they're both, the both coefficients match, you can choose which one. But since we started this process looking at x, let's continue work, working with x. So at this step, we're ready to do that vertical combination. We do need to decide how we combine these for them to go away. Do we add them or subtract them? In this case, add, OK? Some teachers will teach you to always multiply in a way that changes the sign. And you can do that. I teach students to just get the coefficients the same number and then decide if it's addition or subtraction. Okay? And if you need to, you can be like, is negative 2 plus 2 0 or negative 2 minus 2 0 on your calculator? And just double check. But in this case, we want to add them. So we get negative 2x plus 2x, that's 0. Negative 16 plus negative 16 is negative 32y. And this should look familiar, because we did it with substitution. Negative 8 plus 8 is 0. And look at that. We are down to one step to find y. Pretty cool, right? So we get y equals 0. Now, it's the same from here. We need to take that 0 and plug it back in and solve for the other variable. So I'm going to pick, actually, I don't really know which one is better. But for me, it's the first one. So 2x minus, it doesn't look like minus, minus 16y equals 8. That is going to get dropped right in there for y. Right, it takes the place of y. Then we say 2x equals 8. Divide by 2, 
and x equals 4, and we get 4, 0. So elimination. Combine the two equations in a way that eliminates a variable. Okay? You do need to get good at this method because this is how we're going to solve the systems of three equations, the big ones. So you do need to know how to do this. Substitution, to me, is a little bit more optional, but this is not. Okay? How about that one? Do you want to do another example and then write notes? Yes. Okay. So write this one down. Again, I'm going to, I think I'm just going to move this down so I can work with it. Sorry, I know I'm in your way here. <coughs> okay, so work with me through it. Again, we're going to combine these in a way that gets rid of the variables. But we can only do that if coefficients match. Just one pair. It doesn't have to be both. Like the last one happened to work out that way, but we only need one pair to match. So you have to get good at looking at these and figuring out which one is easiest to get rid of. By looking at how, like which one is it easiest to match the coefficient. Why? Why? Because how? How would we get that? Yeah, so we can just multiply this first equation by 3, so 3 times 2 is 6, and then it matches. Okay? Um, I'm going to call this 1 and 2. We need to multiply equation 1 by 3 so that it matches the 6. So we'll distribute across. So equation 3 will be 9x minus 6y equals negative 6. Okay? If you want a description, equation 3, uh, equation 3 is equation 1 <coughs> times 3. I'm going to write the word times actually. So equation 3 is equation 1 times 3. Okay. Bring back equation 2. Decide how you want to combine these. How do we combine negative 6 and negative 6 to make 0? Do we add or do we subtract? Okay, and again, if you're like, I don't, I, I mean, I wish that you could know this, but I don't want you to mess it up either. So you can go negative 6 plus negative 6. Oh, that's negative 12. That's not 0. Negative 6 minus negative 6. Oh, that is zero. So I need to subtract. That takes five seconds to check, right? Don't mess it up. Here's how I want you showing that so you don't mess it up. I want you to put what you're doing out here and make it obvious. Like, make it big, circle it, so you don't forget what you're doing. Because we're going to have to subtract all the way across. So now we go do that. 9 minus 5x. We get 4x, negative 6 minus negative 6, that's our 0. So I don't write zeros, you can if you want to. Then negative 6 minus 10, negative 16. So check it out, that, that little step, and we're already practically done with x. It's awesome. This is probably going to jump up. Oh. Okay, divide by 4, and you'll get x is negative 4. So there's 1. From here, we still have to go plug that in and solve for the other variable. So I'll let you guys pick which equation would you like to sub it into. You can do 1, 2, or 3.
One, I have two votes for one. Did you just say two? I know, now I have two to two. <laughs> Luis, you're the tiebreaker. Uh, All right, he's going with two. So we're going to sub that into two. So back to equation two with four, negative four plugged in. So five times, and I always leave it so I can put it in color. So put, put negative four in four X, just like that. Then we solve, get that y by itself. So add 20. Divide by negative 6. And we get 5, negative 5 for y. Don't forget to write it as a point, just like we have been. So negative 4, comma, negative 5. Parentheses, that's our answer. Okay. I want to talk about one other thing before we write. Are you, are you guys following this? Yes. You did do it in Algebra 1, 100% sure on that. It was probably before Christmas of Algebra 1, but you did do it. Maybe it might, it might have been right after. Okay. Let's see if I have one of these. Yeah, here's a good example. Notice here that none of these coefficients are multiples of each other. Like, 3 is not a multiple of 2, 7 is not a multiple of 4. How do you solve it when it's like that? So do, I want you to write this down as an example. Also... Lots of examples today. Oops. Jeremiah, are you with us? Seems like you've been on that a while. Okay, so again, notice uh, the coefficients are not multiples. Boy, that is nasty writing. There we go. A little better. Coefficients are not multiples. Okay, which means I can't just multiply one equation, is really what that is going to tell us, okay? So, you guys, this is just like the idea of finding a common denominator and multiplying by it. It's the same kind of idea. Pick one of the coefficients and make sure to get, the, get them the same. You just multiply them to get to be the same number. So, and it doesn't matter what you choose. It doesn't matter mathematically which you choose, but it can matter in terms of how big your numbers get. So what would be a good one to make 4 and 7 the same? Like what number would I want them both to be that are both multiples of 4 and 7? <coughs> 3. 3. What was it? I don't know who said it. Yeah, it's 28, right? So I'm going to be multiplying this one by 4 and that one by 7. Do you see how it's just a crisscross kind of thing? Yeah. Which is fine, but we could also do that with the 2 and 3, and it's a little smaller. So my suggestion for when it's like this, when you have no multiples of coefficients, just crisscross, like take the 2 here and the 3 here. Okay? Or you could have done it with the 4 and 7. So put a 2 out front and a 3 out front. Just take the, the other equations coefficient and multiply the whole thing by that. Okay, we're going to distribute all the way across. Uh, 
I did forget to label equation 1 and 2. So now we're going to have equation 3 and 4, aren't we? You guys tell me the, the components of equation 1. Go ahead, start saying it. 8x minus 6y equals 18. Okay, equation 4. 21x plus 6y equals... Negative 18. Okay? Equation 3 was 1 times 2. So I, I'm writing this for notes and examples sake. Equation 1 times 2. And equation 4 was equation 2 times, times 3. Good, All right? Now we need to decide how do we combine them so that we get rid of the y. Yeah, good job. So underline, put that add over here real big so you don't forget that you're adding. 8 plus 21 is 29x. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. 18 plus negative 18 is also 0. So that worked out nice. X is zero. Okay? You pick which equation do you want to plug zero into. You can pick one, two, three, or four <clears throat> at this point. Arturo pick. He says equation one. Let's go do equation one. So, 4x, uh, sorry, 4 parentheses, and then let's copy the rest down, plug that 0 in there, okay, solve for y, so we get negative 3y equals 9, divide, divide, and we get negative 3. Elimination. It's the bomb. <laughs> is that still the same? No. What is it? It's gas. Is that good? Uh, ew. <laughs> Do people still say that? <laughs> Have you ever heard that millennial praise song? I don't think so. It's hilarious. Yeah. You, you should play it. Okay. Uh, we're not because we're just sick of it. Now. Thank you. Oh, wait, I actually think I might have. Now. Is yeah. it on Instagram? I don't know. Well, I think one of my, one of my kids found it on YouTube. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about yeah. now. Guys, let's try to get these notes in here. We have five minutes. It sticks in my head. I'm going to go to the next page. There's another saying in your generation for good. What is it? I'm trying to remember. Oh. But. Is that still a thing? Well, I mean, I mean, it's. For our generation, people feel good. Yeah, I guess so. Or like somebody that's older. I've heard lit before. Elimination is lit. <laughs> Maybe like heat? Yeah. That's heat? Heat? Oh, you know what I've been hearing lately? It's fire. That's what we're talking about. Is that I what you're saying? Fire. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's fire. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. I feel like we need to kind of describe the plan and then talk through steps. This is a little bit hard to write in notes, I'll be honest, because there are options. 
And so writing notes can't cover all the different choices that you have. Okay, so it's more of a goal description. You need to get a coefficient. You guys ever wonder if one of those is going to just come right in here? That's good. What? You guys didn't live through 9 11, but it, it like oh, plays in your mind. I understand, but like, yeah. I don't really remember everything. Okay. Get the coefficient of x, y, or z. Okay? We're going to have to address z down the road. <laughs> the same. Get the. Uh, do we need to describe or define what coefficient is? No. Okay. That was definite. No. That's the same. Yeah. Get the coefficient of x, y, or z. Again, you might have to pick z as one that you want to get the same. Get it the same. Um, writing this in a different color. You might need to scale whole equations. Uh, by the way, scale means multiply. I should have just probably used that word. Whole equations. to get there. Okay? Then combine and in parentheses say add or subtract the variable solve for the remaining variable I hope those of you here are packing up plan on writing this down and then we'll need to plug in we'll do that Tomorrow, so grab a picture. Whoop. If you didn't finish, that's fine, I'll post it. But um, grab a picture of that problem, please, and solve that for tomorrow. I will put a picture of this on Google, but if you have it, that just makes it easier. Okay, you guys, good work today. Really good work.